we been, we been, we been, we been. In life you don't lose, you learn. And every one of us has potential. 100 percent The winner is. Here we go, rebound. Oh yeah, we're back again with yes, another sir. episode of Rebound and Rebuild yes, with sir. my boy Carlos, the creator. Oh yeah, and Coach Charles here, but we're really excited about this one, right, Carlos? Because we have a special guest. Yes, I'm yes. probably more excited than you, I, though. I, no, I think I'm more excited. I don't know. You don't even know the guy, man. Like no, I know that's my brother, bro. Hey, he's an Olympian. Yes, he is. Okay. More than that, by default. Yes. The first thing that I love about this guy, he's an Olympian athlete. Yep. A multi-Olympian athlete. Yes. If I if I get it right. But other than that, yeah, many, many, many things that he has <laughs> got to offer us today on uh, today's broadcast. Oh, yeah. So without further ado, i got to introduce my boy, Fabian Florent. Man, how many times champion, bro? Like 20-time European champion? Man. Come on, bro. Many, many. 20-time <laughs> Dutch champion. There you uh, go. Two-time European champ. Okay. Uh, clubs and uh, teams. And... Uh, yeah, the best triple jumper in the history of the Netherlands. So. Oh, of course, you had to throw that in. The best triple <laughs> jumper in the history of the country, by the way. But it's all good, yeah. man. Proud of you. Thank you for being on the show, bro. No problem. Yeah, everybody's looking at you like, man, Charles looks way better than this guy. <laughs> Anytime you're ready, let's go. <laughs> you you want to jump right now? No, nah, I'm talking okay. about looks, man. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, bro. Well, so, you guys put me to shame because I'm sure you guys are 7% body fat. Where you're no, looking at that 35 boy right is here. super lean. I've always been that way. <laughs> uh, just right at this point, it's all about dieting for me. Um, yeah. I just watch my intake and uh, I make sure I, I keep that lean. Uh, figure for me it's important yeah bro i don't want to be changing my closet too much so yeah you know all those designer <laughs> clothes man yeah you got to keep them the same size everything is tight <laughs> yeah 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 well look man so you you you're here in america with us for a little bit of while, a little bit of time what brought you here do you mind talking a little bit about that yeah sure i mean i, tra I travel as much as i can yeah um i wanted to bring the family over to uh to, to florida just to kind of refresh and and and, and make sure that um you know that they remember that this is also home for us yeah um so we decided to just make us you know a, a short trip to, come yeah. to florida we were in the caribbean as well so you know as it's a pandemic right now and you know there's a lot of stress in staying home i yeah. try to do my best in um traveling it might sound crazy as much as possible because that's not crazy um you know it helps give us a balance that's right so, that's you know. right Express, especially in your home country where you i guess where you're really rooted at this time yep. things are a little bit more restricting than they are here yeah definitely um in in the netherlands at the moment um uh, they're in a lockdown yes so only the grocery stores are open oh, wow um so everything else is closed um and then you have the weather that's sort of cold yeah so <laughs> there's not that much you can do so yeah, you can yeah. imagine coming from here where no it's snowboarding sunny, man nothing no <laughs> <laughs> total lockdown kind of right now so um it's it's uh it's something that you have to cope with and know how to handle yeah because it, it can have a, a big impact on your mental yeah. health i can imagine that um, bro so i just try to get out as much as possible and you can work from home it actually is a very flexible time for people that can work from home yeah. so why lock yourself in a room that's right exactly. speaking of work from home though so i was telling you carlos this guy he does everything like you yeah. know how you look at me like you guys do so much this exactly. cat is literally somebody that's leading the charge but you saw so you were in banking i know you 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 trade futures you have businesses in america bro like you're everywhere yeah i try to um you know spread my my eggs in multiple baskets yeah. and that's a simple rule that that you learn in, in school when you study business and you know don't put all your eggs in one basket yeah true um but i like to spread it out because um in the event that um, things would get more crazy when it comes to the pandemic. I can move and I can do different things Anywhere, that can make yeah. me happy because um, I don't like being in one place and calling that place home. I like uh, traveling a lot. That's why you looked like that when I said that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So um, I like to do investments and have them spread out throughout the world. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's real estate or whether it's stocks and, um, uh, and know that you know, if one thing fails, another thing is going to succeed. That's so, true. Um, yeah. That's sort of, sort of my plan, especially somebody with a finance background, um, I try to utilize all the knowledge that I've gained over the years and make sure that in the future that um, things are going to be better for me and my family. Yeah, man. That's one thing I love about you, man. You are you are an ultrapreneur, right? And yeah. and and I love it because you know how some people, they're like habitual or or what are they, what's the other word people say a lot of times? They're like serial entrepreneurs. Right. But yeah. that's not him. Like he's successful because you focus, like you may have multiple veins, but you're genuinely successful in all of them because you're able to really concentrate. What's, 
if you had to give some advice to somebody, what's one thing you would say to someone, not necessarily starting out, but someone who's like trying to find their veins? How did yeah. you find your direction in these areas of business outside of sport? Um, well, you have to be open-minded okay. and you have to prepare yourself because um, one of the things I've learned over the years, especially hanging out with um, you know multimillionaires and people that right. are su successful in gen generally speaking, is that you have to be able to have the funding to execute when that opportunity comes. True. Right. Maybe you go on vacation, let's, hypothetically speaking, you go to Mexico and um, uh, through a contact of a contact, you found out that there's a condo for sale for okay. 50,000, it's 150. How are you gonna capitalize on that opportunity? True. Yeah. So you have to basically always prepare to execute and take that calculated risk. Yes. And to do that, you basically have to have your base set up. So what I do is I make sure that, okay, um, I know my network, net net worth. I know um, what I'm capable of, of doing in terms of my purchasing power. Yep. So then I just keep my mind open. Yeah. It mm -hmm. could just be having striking a conversation with somebody that's successful and they say, hey, do you know that I'm venturing into this right now? Wow. This is what's going to happen in the next couple of years. I've paid um, you know, a financial analyst to give me all the data and this is what's going to happen. Wow. So I can jump on that opportunity right away. Right. But I tend to travel a lot and also that actually helps because when you go travel. into different um, um places and you talk to different people you try to have a better understanding on what's going on in that respective place mm. and how you can basically capitalize on that opportunity yeah so if you're a person that say okay i really want to learn how to um you know spread my wings and and you know and and have multiple you know eggs in different baskets and i want to invest then you have to do your research yes yeah. uh, and then you have to make calculated risk right and then you all most importantly you have to basically have the funding available so you can capitalize whether whether that's being pre-approved with a bank yeah um you know work on your credit make sure everything is good so that right. when the opportunity comes you can capitalize yes on it. sir um it takes money to make money <laughs> true <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, what, what i'm liking here is like and it's a big rule a big lesson for me is like always be ready always be ready always be ready what do they say if you stay ready you don't have to get ready <laughs> you know yeah i mean even right now while i'm in orlando if, if uh i'm looking i'm interested in looking for a condo maybe i'm within miami on, on orlando and an opportunity comes um, even if somebody gives me 75% off, how am I going to buy it? Yeah. Right. That's it true. It means nothing. It's a great discount, yeah. but oh, if you it's can't only, It's only 30000 down right now and you can have wow. it. Oh, yeah. Things I can't. Yeah. So as long as you, 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 you're you mentally prepared to capitalize on opportunities, you're going to be successful if you're prepared for it. Wow. And you have to basically be in that mind frame. So if you're a saver, you're a person that say, okay, I, I, I'm not a big risk taker. Right. I, I really, I'm conservative. Okay, save the money. Yeah. How much can you save? 50, That's 60K? True. Have the money there. So when the opportunity comes and you're ready to execute, you can do something. Wow. And then make sure that your credit is good. Make sure you have some cash on hand. You have to basically diversify, um, you know, your portfolio in terms of what you have that you can you can trade with. Wow. What you can your purchasing power. You so have that's to have that championship ready. mindset for you. He talks like a competitor, <laughs> but he's talking about life. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, that's now, amazing. A uh, question for you, Fabian. Um, you started as an athlete. Yep. Now, were you a businessman, entrepreneur during your time as? As an Olympian? I, I would say, yeah. Or even in college? Even before that, yeah. I would say. Um, I remember when I was living in the Caribbean, I um, I was one of the first people in my cities to have um, um, a computer with a, a CD burner. Oh, wow. And I had a friend and I actually told him, well, I'm going to order some CDs. Um, try to see if you can go to all of the, the local shops and see what playlists that they want. Because at that wow. time, they had different playlists with different CDs. And I, I actually worked out a deal with him, you know, 80-20. I was like, wow. you know, you go out there, you sell it, I give you 20%. So wow. my, my, I always had that business entrepreneur type of yes, mentality. Yes, yes. Um, but at a very young age, I would say my junior year in high school, I realized that your athletic ability is limited. Right. Yeah. And I said, okay, good word. I, if you're going to go into athletics and you're going to try to get, um, you know, college paid for, and you're going to try to push yourself beyond that, you have to have a plan B. Yeah. Because one thing that's inevitable is that you're going to have to stop at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So I again, I didn't put all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah. I said, okay, I'm going to make sure that my education is solid in the background. Mm -hmm. And also my work experience is, is um, solid as well because I have seen, um, and I'm, I'm a very um, attentive person. So yeah. I have heard about guys that were very successful in athletics that right. I was looking up to, world yeah. champions, and all of a sudden they would disappear. Yeah. 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 What happened? Yeah. He got hurt. Okay, what is he doing right Nothing. now? Maybe working at Walmart. Mm -hmm. right. It shouldn't work that way. Yeah. Right. So I just kind of prepared myself that in the, in the event that something would happen, that I can just continue life right away mm. on a successful path wow. and not have to fall back. Yeah, bro. Wow. So much wisdom. So much. Even I at such a you. young age. Yes. You know, it's so funny because nowadays, like, 
the youth of today is right. like they bank on one thing or right. they think or they that, see social media youtube this is where i'm gonna yep. make it i'm gonna be the next yep. uh youtuber or star yep. or whatever yep. and it's like guys there's a bigger world there's out a bigger there. world Definitely. than that it's a cycle so what, what one thing that that actually um um st stimulated my confidence in terms of everything that i do is once you have plan b in place already then you can go 100% on plan A. That's right. When I when I went to when I, when I went to um track and field on, from a professional perspective, I did every day I went to the track, I'm just like <laughs> hamstring could totally rip today and I yes. don't care. Yeah. Yep. So that gave me confidence to just push and yeah. push yeah, and push and push. The hardest push and then go, I, it, it it worked out very well that formula. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I'm glad he said that because I was going to ask, you know, you hear a lot of people who are really successful, they say things like have a plan A because plan B sucks. Yeah. And they always say, don't focus on plan B because if you have a backup, then you're never going to go full throttle on plan A. Th there's another misconception with this That's as right. well. That's right, say it. The second one, the, the, one, the big mis misconception is um, don't quit your day job uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur. Wow. Um, that is that is a big misconception because the day job is your base income sure. to allow you to do your second to job, build your, build your entrepreneurship, yes, true, whatever you want true. to do. So if you just give up and you say, okay, I, I have a base salary coming in at X, Y, and Z job, right. and I'm just going to go focus on that second job. Well, if it fails, you really fail. Yeah. But you have to do it in, in a more subtle way where you keep the day job right. until you can sustain yourself with the second job. That's right. And when, you're, when your business, your your business is successful enough where you can quit the, the, the main job, then you do it. Yeah. But you don't just quit and say like, okay, I'm going to go all in. Yes. That's a big misconception as well. I agree with that. Again, it falls back to not putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, 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 That's true. So what if circumstantially then you have someone, let's say that something happens at the job, they mm -hmm. had to leave. It wasn't their decision to go right because that happens you're right right yeah. and then that's a different that's a different focus true. then if it happens mm -hmm. like that then you could say okay um i didn't that was beyond my control that's true then you can focus on your on your business that you're trying to yes. develop anyways but some people try to try to have that negative uh um you know thought process of okay if i'm working and i'm tired of working i really want to just, just focus quit. my business just quit. yeah no you shouldn't yeah you should mm -hmm. you should only your, your plan b should be um thought through in a way that is so successful that it it basically outshines your that's your, right, your that's main right. job. You and have that's no when you say, like, okay, to then move. Or at least if it's even equal, you say, okay, okay. it's make I'm making the same money with my 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 business. So now is the time for me to just focus. Very good. It man. has to be planned properly. That's awesome. Man. Would you say your athleticism or your athletic background has a lot to do with being so disciplined? And because you're talking about quite a few eggs Fabian, in one discipline, basket. discipline, please. No, <laughs> I'm just I'm just so it's like for, for a regular Joe, for anyone who's out there, it's like, right. man, I can barely keep up with plan A. Right. Yeah. How do you come up with plan B, C, D, make them so solid yes. that I can... I fall back on any of them. Yeah, I, I would say the discipline aspect of my life did come from athletics because um, it's, it, it's one of the things that have tested me um, uh, on the highest level, I would say, in my life because mm -hmm. even even being a, like in a suc successful Olympic athlete, um, you it, it, it was the only thing in the world that I thought that even after putting 100%, it's still not guaranteed. That's yeah. true. So you could see, you could have the best coach in the world. You could have the that best sponsors and therapies. And then you could qualify and you could still not go to the Olympics. We've because if it. you're injured, We've you're not going to go. So happen. I said, you know what? Let me try to see if I can achieve this. So that really tested my discipline and my, you know, everything that I had in terms of trying to be successful, yeah. the ups and downs and everything. And just I'm really st t talking to myself saying, okay, it's raining today, but you still have to train yeah. because the other yeah. guy is probably training right That's now. That's right. They are athletes that's in the warm weather and you're not. So every every block that I had, when I say block, that like things that hinder me from um, trying to be successful, I had to kind of be mentally strong yeah. to try to overcome those obstacles. Yeah. And that actually helped me in my life. And uh, the other day I was actually just driving the car and I was just thinking about, you know, what I've accomplished so far in my life. And I said to myself, it's, it's amazing what athletics have done to me because yeah. w one of the biggest takeaways I can say is that... Um, it taught me how to turn a negativity into a positivity. Okay, yeah. talk about so, that. So, um, you know, negativity is something that's going to happen in life, period. Right. Yeah. Um, if you're an athlete, you're going to get injured. Uh, if you work in a work environment, um, you're going to have the days when you're down and stuff. So why, why make it affect you? 
Yeah. Um, you have to approach it in a positive mindset. Like, okay, I'm approaching this tar- this this challenge. Um, there's going to be ups and downs and, uh, within it. So when the downtime come, let's make sure that we are prepared to handle it yes. and keep on moving. And that makes you stronger. So that's why I'm always happy. I'm always I'm trying to be positive. And maybe when that other person is having a really terrible day, I could be having the same terrible day too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I'm just positive because it's yeah. part of life. That's right. A positive outlook on things. Yeah, is that's a right. Big difference. That's right. And I'll, then keep it moving. Yeah. Right. We were just talking about that on last episode. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that um if you if things are, are not great or things are bad, that you really have to just keep on smiling. But I, what I'm saying is that you know it's there already. You can have your moment of being maybe angry and depressed, mm. but you don't make that affect your 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 movement in terms of going forward. Yeah. That's what I really mean. Because yeah, I don't I don't expect people to be um faking their happiness, but right. you know that you know, you, you, you're you going to take this flight. The flight is, is canceled. Like, you, there's nothing you can do. What so can why make do? that destroy your entire day? That's right. Um, you just say, okay, well, it was meant to happen. Let's move on and just focus on the next flight and just keep on going. Yeah. That, that's 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 uh, business class problems right there, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, this flight is canceled to Amsterdam. I mean, I can't be mad that I can't yeah. go to the Louis Vuitton store. <laughs> Upgrade me, please. You know, it's not my fault, you know. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, uh, you have to invest and you have to pay the price to get to that, that point, That is too. very so true. Like, that is very not, true. Not everybody can say, I get to do this because, you know, you worked very hard. Yes, you've done and you've been wise in a lot of your outlook and thinking of projects and businesses. Yes. Yeah. And that's what led you or has opened the door for. Sure. Yeah. And I, and I realized that, you know, when, when you, um, when you're young and you're starting to sort of, um, draw the plan of your life or, or make or make your own path um you know some people are very successful because they had great mentors or that is they come true. from successful families true. um but if you don't have that um the one thing that you could do that i learned from from my experience from myself is um once you approach something just just have a proper um calculation of risk okay. and then know that okay the option and evaluate your options as well. So when I evaluate my options, the one that I choose, I choose it in a way where if I would look back, I have no regrets. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So if I'm saying I'm moving to a place, I do all the calculate. Okay, that place is hot, it's cold, whatever. But then the income is good. And then I say, okay, um, if, if I go with that, if I go with that option, I will never look back and say it was the wrong option. I made the best calculated risk at that time. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not. It's, it's spontaneous sometimes, but it's calculated. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So you, in the back of your mind, it's just like, oh man, you could have made so much more money. No, because at that time, the calculation I, I made, that. I couldn't have done anything better. Bro, let me tell you. You bought a house for two hundred k, but if you had bought the one for three hundred k, you'd be up five hundred k. I couldn't afford it at that yeah. time, yeah, so I took right. the one for two hundred k. So I'm wow. satisfied with the fifty percent I made, and yeah, I didn't make a hundred, but I'm happy with the fifty. Mm-hmm. I can look back. I cannot look back and say like. I could have, would have. No, it's done already. Man, I hope you guys are getting this because he's dropping some gems. And if you're listening to how he said it, one of the things that really just struck me is just reminding yourself that it's okay that you made the best decision at the time you made it. Correct. My mom used to always tell me that. She said everything in life literally comes back to that. If you buy a red car and then two years later you see the same car in blue, yeah. well, at that time you won the red car. So enjoy the heck out of that red exactly. car. Exactly. It's going to be like that regardless. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's the seasons too. I think you have to learn how to yeah. enjoy the season. The that seasons, you're in. regardless of whatever decision you make, that's if right. it's good or bad, you made it according to what you had available well, you had the means and it's like one of the things that dave ramsey and you you guys heard sure. about dave ramsey he says live within your means yes correct so do not live outside of your right. means and that's the whole uh plan to get out of debt right yep but totally a different. lot of people particularly here in america yes. think Sorry. that they yep. can live so far beyond their mean, yep. uh, means because of credit cards loans right etc right. etc and it's like before you know it you're yep. living right not even with one egg in a basket, yeah. you're trying right. to make an egg yeah. out of crumbs. Yeah, because one thing I do, sorry, one thing I, I also do is I, I would never try to keep keep up with the Benjamins. Yeah. It's just not my style. I understand. Um, I've realized that, and if you look at many successful um you know, entrepreneurs and business people, you know, Warren Buffett and um, Bill Gates, a lot of people, they live very modest. Yeah. Yes, they do. The, the same house that he bought yep, in 1982. Still living in it. Why upgrade and build a mansion for yeah. what? Right. It's not necessary. So that's one of the things that allows me to be successful in multiple countries. I stay very light. Yeah. You know, I don't need to have, because the, the more you invest that's in right, in something and you put all your eggs into that thing, you're going to be stuck in that place. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that I can go into multiple countries and I can call multiple countries home is because I have exactly what I need in every country. Yeah. Mm. And that gives me the flexibility. 
Um, I don't need to, you know, stick a thousand dollar payment on a car in Europe. Yeah. And I'm going to be traveling every other week. Like, yeah. what's the point? That's right. Once I once I invest a thousand dollar payment on the car, that means I'm going to want to stay there and drive yeah. the car and enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> I rather just not have a car. Period. Right. Right. You know. Right. So I I, I although my, some people might see me as um. I, you know, I look like I spend a lot of money and, and, you know, I dress well and everything, but that's because I have that flexibility. That's yeah. right. Because I make sure I keep things at a, at a very moderate mm -hmm. uh, um, spending limit mm -hmm. so I can that's enjoy so life. awesome, bro. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Enjoy life. That's right. When you can enjoy that's life. That's right. And work hard when you have to work hard. That's right. Um, can Could you say or could you tell any of our listeners that has there been mistakes that you've made that Along you're like, uh, if there was one thing that I was like, I wish I shouldn't have done that. I wish I would have taken a right turn instead of a left turn. Um, because I do, because my risk are calculated, I don't really have too many examples of that. All but right. one of them I would say is that when I was in college, uh, my sophomore year, I wanted to invest in a property that was on campus. Yeah. Um, and then, which is funny to think that the, right. the college student this thinking is how about he was thinking. Yeah. My roommates always told me I was one step ahead. Yeah, bro. I always had more, I always had roommates paying my rent. <laughs> so shout house out to all the roommates in college early. House hacking, okay. Shout out to all of my college roommates that paid my rent. <laughs> Appreciate it. You contributed towards the yeah, success. That's right. <laughs> no, but um, I I just I started with Wells Fargo Bank. Um, I was already in college, so um, I wanted to just take advantage of um getting a, a house at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the people that I work with, they were they had multiple properties already, and I also was trying to uh, go into the professional track and field at the same time. And uh, I asked them for the opinion. I was like, you know, I, I of course I work for a bank, so I can I'm already pre-approved. I can get this house very quickly. I have a really nice network within the school. You know, if you you know NCAA All American, mm -hmm. the coaches know you and everything. Right. Um, so I could actually buy this house that's on the corner of campus, and then I can rent it out. That's right. And then, but um, almost everybody sort of discouraged me at that time. They said, well, you know, if you're trying to pursue your, your goals in, in track and field, right. maybe it's not a good idea to um, to have this apartment because if the pipes break or something, you might have to, you, it might distract you. Right. So I didn't do it. I sort of regret, but I did ask advice at that time. And I cannot really tell you if it was a good or bad decision, but I, mm -hmm. I do feel like I should have. Right, there was yeah. an opportunity that you that's one of the That's over. one of the regrets I had. I, that that would have been my first um, property, um, I think at maybe 21. Yeah. Right. Um, but I did capitalize on that because um, uh, even, you know, uh, last year on my birthday, I purchased two properties. All so, right, congratulations, it, it, bro. You know, Happy thanks. birthday. Yeah. Gives it himself <laughs> two new properties. <laughs> oh, that's my birthday <laughs> present. You know what I mean? This is this is um, high life, man. Yeah, so that, that, yeah, that's one of the regrets that I have, but I don't have many because- yeah. Yeah, I, I evaluate everything. Like I said, I yeah. sit down with myself and I say, okay, um, if you're going to go with this, what are the pros, what are the cons? And when I go with it, I go with it. Yeah, so yeah. I can't go back. So right now I'm, I'm telling you that I regret not buying the property when right. I was younger, yeah. but then right. would it have jeopardized my right. Olympic career? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows? Yeah. But it probably would have kept me more um, stuck in that one area. I can understand mm -hmm. And I, I left uh, Missouri a few years later and I went to Florida. But had I had the apartment, maybe you I would have, have to force me to get a job more. there. Right. So. It happens like that yeah. sometimes. Yeah, man. Yeah. God has his way of doing all things. Definitely. Man, bringing, places, bringing where we're supposed to be, man. Yeah. So talk to us about some of the other things. So the one thing I want to first uh, say thank you so much for, and I hope our viewers appreciate it, is listening to this man speak who has all the Olympic accolades and the life to go with it, but you're talking from a financier, a, a business entrepreneurial, and like life tracker yeah. perspective so that's beautiful to me because that's what i want people to see just as much is that there's life outside of the thing that we think is our passion correct right so you're passionate about that but you're taking that same passion and putting it into things that are going to last beyond you Definitely. that's incredible man yeah. congratulations thanks but i do want to ask you if you don't mind before we wrap up the rest of the show talk a little bit about about your olympic experience man and and your journey and some of the things you you witnessed, like your travels, man. Yeah, actually, the the year of the Olympics, I did twenty track meets, so wow. almost almost you know twelve thirteen countries. Wow, like I, that was my most um um hectic schedule I've ever had. Wow, from January all the way down till September, wow. I was traveling almost every other weekend. Um, that was a, just a tremendous um, what year journey. Was this two thousand sixteen okay. at the yeah, Rio actually. Rio Olympics? Um, I planned this very well, so I said okay. Um, uh, off season or, or preparation phase in, in track and field usually starts in September. Right. September, October, November. And then you, you, you could start your indoor track and field um, in January, February, March. And then outdoor track really starts in April, April, May. So I, in the summertime, I said, okay, um, 
I have invested several years training. I had a professional coach staying with me, a Cubans coach. Um, he taught me tremendously, like um, you know, about tri uh, you know triple jump and the foundation and what you need. Because triple jump, my event is very technical, Incredible and um, if you don't have um, somebody that's that's done it before, it's mm. very difficult to coach it. Yeah. Um, because there's several factors that contribute towards um the the technique that's applicable to you as a person. Yes. Charles might be stronger than me. I yeah. might be weaker, but I could be faster. Yeah. He could be. So I we can we cannot do the same training. We can do majority. Already, but there's a a, 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 a a time when the um um you have to we have to focus on what is good for him and what is yeah, good for me. Right. So I I kind of wrote my own program. I bought a book, and uh, I said, okay, if you're going to write this book, and this book is basically going to determine your life, how are you going to write it? So I plan everything from um the nutrition right. that I need to have, the different types of training and environment that I might be um, faced with. So if it's cold, if it's rainy, if it's hot, um what kind of a warm up I need to do, cool down everything, um everything. I just wrote everything in this book. I give it to my my Dutch coach at that time. He was sort of like my mentor. He's yes. the, the head coach of my track club, and he literally looked into the book for five minutes or less, and he said, "Okay." And I said, is there anything you need to change? He's like, no. no. <laughs> that's, that's a guy that has over 30 years of coaching experience. Right. He's taken many people to the Olympics. And I was actually, that's the moment when I realized like, okay, I have this you, under you control. Got it. That's right. Started training in October. I was hitting, um, um, October at that time. Yeah, I started hitting all of my targets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Every two weeks I would test and I saw that I was improving. Um, January came around and I was so strong. And then I got an injury. I got, yeah. I, I bruised my heel. Yeah. at that time that. I actually thought I would make it to the Olympics because when my, where I bruised my heel in triple jump because I, I had so much of a good base because I planned it well that I, I my body failed at that time to realize when I was um, over exerting myself yeah. so it's like yeah, I can jump right. all day long yeah. until I just get an injury yep. so my muscles and everything could handle it but under my foot was just the pounding yes, it was just yeah. too much so I bruised my heel and then it took me almost three months to to recover from that because it, it was exactly where the Achilles attached to the heel bone wow. um, the Dutch Doctors didn't want to mess with it because it's yeah, a very delicate right. area. Incredibly. They didn't want to inject anything there to help me recover. Yeah, remember, I tore my Achilles, so, man. Oh, yeah, man, it's just crazy. Yep. So I had to come. I had to actually come back to Florida <laughs> and uh, meet my uh, myofascial um, um, th um, therapist that actually said, "Okay, he's going to really dig in there and get this scar tissues yeah. out." Um, quick stretch and body um, body works as Todd Smith. Um, he right. really helped me out. Shout out Todd. Smith. Shout out to Todd. Appreciate it, brother, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he um. I, you know, he went in there and I screamed so much because the pain <laughs> was unbearable. I lost my voice. Wow. So for three, four days, I was going back to him for therapy and he was really, he had to really get into my sure. heel and dig up the, the scar tissues there. And then I started limping and stuff and gradually I started getting better. It took me like wow. three, three weeks to just learn how to actually move again without the pain because I was kind of limping. Wow. So then I wrote my program out. I said, okay, I'm going to go to a track meet every two weeks. Wow. I started at University of Miami. That yeah. went okay. Two weeks later, um, I was in Bahamas. That went okay. Every every track meet, I was in, improving by one foot yes. in triple jump. And then I came back, took a break. I went to Claremont and then I qualified for the Olympics I there. I remember that. And oh, then man. from there, everything just changed right away. That's incredible. Um, got the ticket. I knew I was going to go to the Olympics and start preparing myself mentally and, and making sure I'm, I'm healthy physically. Yes. Um, even at that point, I wasn't I wasn't um, clear yet because I had to do a medical test. Wow, that's oh, that's how crazy it is. Because I was like, man, I have the Olympic standard. I'm going. No, you're not really going yet because if you do a medical test and the doctor feels that's like you're not right. fit, that's right. You're not gonna you don't go. go. Yep. Even so I passed the test, medical test, and everything was fine. And um, we went to Portugal. We were there for two weeks um, wow. for a training camp, and then we got to Rio. Uh, when we got to Rio Olympics, it was crazy. Be but the, the biggest surprise is that I had the the blessings to train with, you know, Olympic champion Christian Taylor. Yeah, and man. the group that I was training with at that time, it yeah. was so much on a high level yes, right. that I had to adapt very quickly yes, sir. in basically staying humble and relaxed to ensure that you have a good performance and yes. that you don't get stage fright or anything like that. That's Not right. that I never had that, but it's the Olympics. But let me say happened. this, that was a great point you just made too, because you are already high level. There's yeah. no doubts. But you were in the class training with other high level athletes right. that took you to another level. Right. And you said I had to be humble right. and relaxed, relaxed in yeah. order for that to happen and you not have those anxieties that other people would have. Yep. So what would you say that that would be a great benefiting factor to someone who's listening to not just your story, but in all areas of life? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know, even in, in if you look at it from a business perspective, let's say that you know, in your mind, you just said, you know, you always want to capitalize on opportunity. And yeah. you said, okay, I wouldn't mind meeting a billionaire. Like, 
if you meet that billion and you're too nervous, he's not going to give you an opportunity. Mm. You have to be calm and mm. make him realize that uh, that he could also be down to earth as well, and you yeah. can strike a conversation. That's right. But if you you know you you right. stage fright, you want to take a, you know take pictures and stuff, he's just going to see you as okay. Yeah, it cannot be that serious. Yeah. That's right. So same thing applies to athletics. You know, if you want to learn from the best of the best, people are Olympic champions. You want to see how they move, how mm. they act, and you want to adapt to that because that's where you want to be. That's right. So when I went to Olympics, the most surprising thing is that it was like another practice. There you go. There was no craziness. Of course, yeah. when Usain Bolt came into yeah. the warm-up field, everybody was like, like right, you know, running around, yeah. taking pictures. And so I took some pictures with him. He's a yeah, pretty cool totally guy. Different. But, um, you know, I was like, wow, I'm at the Olympics. People are crazy about this. And it just feels like another track another meet. Day. But that was the only way to yeah. basically perform. That's right. And execute. I had to just, just you know, Christian Taylor told me a lot. He, was, he told me that you got to treat it like it's another day at practice. Wow. Come up, we do the warming up, we talk and everything. And then we get re- put our spikes on and we're ready to go. That's right. And that's what happened. And, um, you know, I... Uh, you know, I missed the finals by a few centimeters, but That's uh, th- that was my second best jump of the year. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, and it just went really quick. I mean, the hype about the Olympics is more about the opening ceremony yeah, and the closing then it ceremony. Yeah, the closing. But when I get, got into the Olympics, I saw that everybody that was on a high level were, were really just focused. And it was really just like how we were talking like today. But imagine we have this talk every day like this. Yeah. And we are at the Olympics right now. It's no difference. No difference. Because gotcha. there's three different types of people that make it to the Olympics. You have the... um. I would say the people that 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 are just excited to go, they don't really care whatever yeah. happens, yeah. right? They're they just like, care. as soon as I get there, I'm an Olympic good. athlete, I'm yep. good. You have the second tier of people that they actually want to perform. They, they're hoping to make the finals. And then you have the the the, the highest tier yeah. of the elite people. They're that, trying to win. They're trying to get medals. They're trying to break the record. They've yep. already been champions. They try. Yeah. So the people that are on the, the most extreme level or the, the highest tier, they're the ones that, that are really focused. They're just humble. They, they relax. You know, they want to make sure that there's no anxiety. Yeah. Yes. Um, they just focus on on therapy and yeah. and um, you know I, I was always laughing with Christian Taylor uh, you know f- uh, because of our time doing Rio we were in the physio room like almost every day <laughs> you know we <laughs> were like I'm going to massage my head today because like, <laughs> it, it was unlimited everything I was like is that physio hey, room open yeah I'll, today I'm going to do my pinky yeah. like we could, we <laughs> massage my ring finger <laughs> like, it was just I could you know it was just so funny that um, we were exchanging his thoughts and it was kind of like you know I'm gonna, I'm here to take care of my body. That's and right. I want to make sure that when I perform that everything is at optimal. Yeah. You know, we I, I was there in the physio room every day making sure I check on everything and making sure that I'm, I'm, I'm physically ready because after that, it's just mental. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, But it was it was so, a funny thing that, you know, every day they were like, oh, here he goes again. Yeah, I'm here again. <laughs> <laughs> my neck. Like, I need to massage my neck, you know. <laughs> Hamstrings, everything is good, but we're just working upper yeah, body and stuff. Can I get a head massage? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the brain ready to perform. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, that was a good experience. Uh, Have you ever had your eyelids there. massage? Huh? I, uh, that would oh, be a okay. new one. <laughs> oh, just, oh, yeah, whoa, another level is fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was the, that was the whole journey of the of the Olympics, and I, I learned a lot from it's it, of course. Journey. And the fact that I, you know I went there and I. Um, I, I did it by myself as well. Like yeah, I, coming did, up to the I Olympics, remember. I didn't really have sponsors. Yeah. I actually put a lot of sponsors on the pressure. I said, okay, we're going to have to make, have an agreement right now before I enter the Olympics. Either you're on board or not. Some sponsors yeah. had never paid an athlete before. Yep. And I said, I didn't care. That's right. Today, you're going to pay me. That's right. Um, if you want me to, to represent you in the Olympics, you're going to pay me. And, and, and That's because you knew your worth. I, and I, I stayed with it. And I, I forced at least three companies to pay me. And uh, it worked out pretty well. I did do the return on investment i advertised for it because there was a very strict rule that you know two weeks in the olympics you couldn't advertise anything there could be a fine right. to that company right. so you had a window before and after yes but the only way you could sort of secretly get in is by basically having that company with you as part of you mm. so i don't necessarily have to say i'm sponsored by charles but right. if i have a charles shirt on yes then you know technically speaking i am representing you yes so it was. It was very. Um, it, do we still have some of those Charles shirts in the back? Yes, get them? I do. Actually. All right. Let's get a couple of those. There. We'll make Next sure time, put my face on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I forced him to do it, and I, and I said, you know, okay, I'm going to show some return on investment. Of course, I'm loyal, and and it worked out pretty well for me, and it was a tremendous learning experience for me. And um, once I got there, I said, okay, now I've succeeded on the highest level. I've achieved. Uh, you know what I thought was impossible, mm. and, and I did it. So then that just put me on the next level of okay. Anything else I do, I'm just gonna go for it. Wow. Mm. Plan properly, and uh, you know if you fail to if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Yeah. I really did experience that by writing the book for the Olympics. Wow. And succeeded. 
Wow, man, that's so amazing, bro. I mean, this guy just took us through <laughs> one of the <laughs> deepest conversations, man. Oh, I mean, so honored to have you, bro. Man, and no you said so many things, so many nuggets, so much wisdom yeah. and observation of life, business, sports, mm -hmm. spirituality, family. Definitely. You know, we didn't even talk much about that. You got babies now, bro. Congratulations. And yeah, but man, thanks. just proud of you, bro. Yeah. Just the life that you're building and creating yep. for others. You're inspiring guys like myself. And I'm honored to be able to say, now i know you inspired my best friend like i said you, you are two brothers in my category in my book and to have you in the same room right, yeah. and know that we're all about the same business man that blesses me this is the company that i keep just a few of them and you're gonna meet more of them of course some of carlos's friends as well but wow. man thank you so much for being a part of the podcast no and problem. thank you for leaving that last message and i hope you got that know your worth it's okay to charge when you know your value. And Definitely. man, that right there to close this segment out, couldn't ask for a better way to discuss what you discussed. Carlos, any Definitely. thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, Fabian, I'm honored yeah, bro. <laughs> to be in the room of, you know, an Olympian. And um, I mean, I, I, I um, show off Charles on the podcast all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, thank you so much for being here. It is an honor for us. And I mean, for all of you guys out there, you see the success story, yes. but the success story started unsuccessfully. That's right. Definitely. And he got to a place where he can live his life, the, re the his his life yes, right. to the fullest because he made certain choices yes. along the way. Chose to rebound and, and rebuild. I'm, I'm sure there was a bunch, a lot of people that you had to rub shoulders with, that you uh, took knowledge from, that you Definitely. took advice from, that you're still doing. And honestly, I commend you. Honestly, yeah, you're an example to me. I know for sure, yes, Charles. Indeed. Um, yeah, but man. thank you again. So if if uh, people want to find Reach you on your social, social media, media, anything, just just Fab Jumper. That's it, very simple. F A B J U M P E R. Yeah. Fab Jumper. Fab. Twitter. You're, aren't you an Facebook. ambassador for your countries too? Yeah, I actually, I'm, 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 oh my I'm, gosh, bro. <laughs> I'm born in the beautiful island of Dominica, it's the nature island of the Caribbean. Um, you know, that's where it all started with my, you know, from my, my, um, primary school days yeah. with my coach. So I'm always going to, I'm always going to be an ambassador for my island. Yes. Um, but you're so, like a certified ambassador for countries though. Yeah. Well, is we're working on that right now. Oh, okay. and, and, um, you know, the, the country is moving quickly in terms of, uh, you know, expanding and, and getting wow. more people to, to be aware of the island. Yeah. So, um, my ultimate goal is to, is to be that person that you can go to and you can find everything you need to know about the island and, you know, you know, bring investors back home and yeah. just continue building because we're still a gem within the Caribbean islands. Yes, um, 365 rivers, several waterfalls, um, several lakes. Um, and it's just, now there's straight flights from Miami to the island. All right. People are just going to, because every all, every island offers almost the same. It's just, you know, you right. go there, you know, there's a nice um, beach, beach that you can, water, right. yeah, but this one is more like, people can compare it with Costa Rica. Wow. You know, it's a rainforest. There's no yeah. poisonous animals. You can swim. You can do everything. So it's a different type of vibe, you know? So, wow, man. Yeah. Do you hear this, legacy guys? <laughs> so that's what we're trying to get you to understand. Uh, yeah. Anything is possible. Nothing is impossible mm -hmm. to those that believe. Exactly. So we hope that after hearing this guy yes. and being a part of uh, what we've been doing in this journey, that you feel inspired to rebound wherever you are. Take it. Again, this is inspiration. Definitely. And then rebuild. Because it's never too late yeah. to yep. build this big. Definitely. If you before you you set your next vacation, please call me. I, I will. I'll make sure I set you in the right. <laughs> All place. right, Fab Jumper, you heard it first. You give me a personal invite. <laughs> yeah, you I, might I, be I, mad you put that out there. Man. Hey, I have, a, I have a group of people I have to take to the island to show a tour, so you might be on that. <laughs> All so right, All reach right, out then. to me. You know, let's go. <laughs> All right, man. Awesome. Well, thank uh, you, Fab Jumper. No My problem. Man. Well, this has been uh, great, yeah. Carlos. If any, if you guys like today's podcast, please let us know. Leave us your comments. Please. Uh, uh, your rate give us a like follow us on youtube and share please it. do uh instagram and uh share it with yeah anybody come who on. needs it i mean come on so see you next time right here on rebound, rebound and rebuild this is coach this charles is coach charles and carlos the creator